Here we're looking at monetary policy and we're going to focus on the Central Bank of the United States. Okay? The Federal Reserve is the Central Bank of the United States. But no one likes to say the Federal Reserve Bank System of the United States of America. It's too wordy, it's too long, and so we simply call it the Fed. All right? Now, it has the word federal in it, but what that means is divided. A lot of people confuse the Federal Reserve with the federal government, but the United States government is federal, it is divided, we have national and state governments, the Fed or the Federal Reserve Bank is a decentralized central bank, and so it is divided. So it is divided into 12 regional districts, and it is run by 12 regional governors. Now, I gotta be honest with you, this was done just to convince the American people in 1913 that it was okay to do this, because up until that point, we really hadn't had a central bank until Andrew Jackson going backwards. We had had a central bank, it was recommended by Alexander Hamilton, but then Andrew Jackson killed it, and since that time, we really hadn't had a central banking authority, okay? So... People were pretty suspect, and the, the idea was, well, we can talk the American people into this if we call it a divided or federal system. See, there won't be concentrated power. There'll be 12 regional governors. Well, um, you know, that's, that's kind of silly because the 12 regional governors simply sit down at the table and they decide the policy. So what we have are 12 regional governors and we have one fed chairperson that way you have 13 people sitting at the table and they can break the tie okay so you have one federal chairperson uh, they are chosen by the uh, president so the president selects the person who's going to be chairman of the federal reserve and the senate approves or disapproves of them all right so we treat this Federal Reserve Chairman kind of like a Supreme Court Justice. That's really how they're treated. Although none of this is in the Constitution anywhere, okay? This is not in the Constitution. This is simply laws that were passed by Congress in 1913. And ever since then, we have perpetuated this system. So Congress could pass a law to remove the Federal Reserve, and the president could simply sign it and say, yep, I agree, let's get rid of it. That could happen. Why hasn't it happened, we're going to see, is that the Federal Reserve is very uh, useful, let's say, <laughs> for federal government of the United States in order to continually print money and uh, get away with that. Okay? So I'll stop there and save it for later. But, um, Currently, our Federal Reserve Chairman is Jerome Powell, and so they rotate every four years. They can be re-selected by the President, or they can have someone else nominate them, okay? So remember, the President selects, and the Senate approves or disapproves. Now, what's interesting is that once approved, they cannot be fired. So it was supposed to be that the Federal Reserve would not represent political interests, yet they are almost always entangled in the political activities of the government, okay? So they are um, like a Supreme Court justice, but even more protected. You know, you can impeach a Supreme Court justice, um, but you can't with these people. So once selected, once approved by the Senate, they're in for four years. Even more so, the 12 regional governors are not selected by the government at all. The Federal Reserve Organization itself selects and promotes these people from inside. So what the United States did in 1913 essentially is say, okay, we're going to take our entire financial system, we're going to hand it to the bankers and say, do good things for all of us because we trust you, okay? So definitely the high point of people's philosophy that uh, humans are basically good. And if we just put the right technically uh, sound people in place, they'll always have the morally sound aspects to do the right thing. As we'll see, this has not always happened. Okay? So that's the system we're currently living with. And um, if you take a look there, what they form is something called the FOMC. 
So you've got your 12 regional governors plus your Fed chairperson, and they form what's called the Federal Open Market Committee. All right? So the FOMC is the body that sits down, they sit around the table and they say, what do we want the money supply to be? So they will set out to target things like inflation rates, unemployment rates, um, and the interest rate overall across the United States. So what they do is they simply look at their supply and demand curves for the entire money supply out there. And if they want to make things easier, all they have to do is conjure up more money out of thin air and send it into the economy. Now that in itself is something that blows most people's minds. The Federal Reserve prints money out of thin air. Okay? It's not as simple as like turning on a printing press and sending it out. Um, there's a little more complexity to that. For instance, they don't actually create money straight into the system. They create money through debt through the banking system. But essentially what they do is they make available money and the way they make that available is simply by inventing it out of thin air. So the Federal Reserve can, in fact, create infinite amounts of money. At least they think they can. Uh, if you go back to last year, there is an interview on 60 Minutes with one of the federal uh, regional governors. His name is Neil Kashkari. And 60 Minutes was asking him, you know, what do you mean by you can provide enough liquidity for any problem? And Kashkari said, we can provide infinite amounts of liquidity. We can make the market as much money out there as we want. We can do whatever we want. Okay, So it's pretty clear that they believe that they can print to infinity. Okay, So as you see what's happening, every time they print more money, you're going to find that the interest rate is going to go down and the quantity of money is going to go up. That's what happens when you create more money. So this is the situation we're actually in right now. The Federal Reserve has pushed interest rates down to about as low as they can go. I think currently interest rates are at 0.25%. That is one quarter of 1%. Okay? So they have pushed this all the way out towards the zero bound. So this supply line is way out here near the bottom. Okay? So that's their solution to dealing with the COVID crisis, is just invent money out of thin air and start pushing it into the system. Okay? So uh, hopefully you understand that um, the Federal Reserve System is really just a collection of banking elites, and they are very much unregulated. They do not open their books to anyone. They do not show what they're doing in their meetings. They uh, release the minutes of their meetings afterwards. So every three months they give a report out on what they see happening in the economy and what they're you know, prepared to do or not do. So this is called forward guidance. We are looking to do this. We're looking to do that. Um, but, you know, they're very much an independent agency. How do you get into these positions? You're usually coming from one of the big banks. So people that have worked for a long time in Goldman Sachs traditionally are the Federal Reserve Chairman. It's almost like that bank owns the United States Central Bank. Hmm. Okay. J.P. Morgan is another one that they come from. Occasionally you'll see people from Citibank, Bank of America. Uh, but mostly Goldman Sachs um, has really dominated uh, the Federal Reserve. It was the bank started by the Rockefellers. And that's Goldman Sachs. Uh, J.P. Morgan named the bank after himself 100 years ago. And J.P. Morgan Chase, it's still a mega bank today. So you've seen a battle between those two over the years. And in the past you know, two decades, Goldman Sachs has really been the one to send most of the Fed chairpersons to this position. Okay, So if you go back 15 years, Ben Bernanke was 
out of Goldman Sachs, and after him, Janet Yellen came out of the academic world, Goldman Sachs, Timothy Geithner for, you know, he was the uh, Secretary of the Treasury for Obama. He was a Vice President of Goldman Sachs. Hank Paulson was the Secretary of the Treasury under George Bush Jr., another Vice President of Goldman Sachs. You're starting to get the idea, right? Okay, so who do these bank um, elites represent? Hmm, okay, so they're not elected by the people and they're not even beholden to the people. It's a very independent agency that runs on these two mandates, okay? So the two mandates that have been given under the law uh, for the Federal Reserve are to control inflation and keep it down and to keep unemployment low and keep that down, all right? So those are the two mandates that have been given um, by Congress in their original charter as to how they were to operate. Uh, I need to throw this in now because this is 2020. And so this year, because of COVID and all the problems, the Federal Reserve has essentially said, you know, we're just going to do things that really aren't in our mandate. You know, and they've said, broadly speaking, it does help with inflation and unemployment if we go out and we buy you know, basically bad debts, bad securities. So currently the Federal Reserve in 2020 has been buying um, mortgage-backed securities. They're called MBS. So people's debts that are simply going to bankruptcy, the Federal Reserve has been buying them. And how do they buy them? They buy them with money created out of thin air. Okay. So now we look at the balance sheet for the Fed and it has just been climbing into the trillions of dollars. They're essentially monetizing, you know, oh, you, you made a bad bet? Well, here, we'll just pay you off. You won't go bankrupt. So a lot of the banks, a lot of the major corporations, the Federal Reserve is simply buying their bad debts. They've been calling them fallen angels, if you want to Google that. Uh, these are mortgage securities that are supposed to be highly rated but it turns out there's so many of them that it would, it would literally melt our economy down. And so to avoid that, the Federal Reserve has been buying them with money they create out of thin air. Okay, so that's a new development this year. Normally, I don't bring that up in this talk here, but I'm not sure where else to put it because it's outside the traditional charter of the Federal Reserve. They're technically breaking the law, but um, Congress simply has said, well, we don't care. Anything that you think might work, just do it. Okay, so that's the point we're at now. Will they start buying stocks? They haven't gone that far. Uh, the Bank of Japan has. And so, you know, it might be that America's Central Bank will go there as well. So you need to understand that this structure exists in America, but this structure has been copied by nearly every country in the world. I think we're down to like three countries that don't have this, maybe five. I mean, it's a pretty small number. So if you understand how this central bank works, you understand how really the whole world works as one big central bank, okay? So hopefully that'll generate some questions for class and I'll see you then.